have done is taken time to train individuals who are uh, virtual assistants. And by the way, a whole lot of your business can be done not only by others, but also can be done virtually. And so we're going to give you some details about that. And I have none other than Mr. Scott Patton. Are you here, Scott? Yes, I am. Yeah, baby. All right. So I'm going to stop my share. And Hi, everybody. Yeah, baby. So how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. Awesome. Awesome. And Scott is our bon vivant man about the world. So he literally travels all over the world and house sits cats and dogs. Hi, Dominique. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and so he's got this whole following of people that say, would you please come to Chile? Would you come to Paris? Would you come to, to Colombia? Would you come to someplace in the world and sit my cats and dogs? And sure enough, Scott says, I'll be right there. And, <laughs> and so he gets on a plane and he takes off and they pay him ridiculous money to sit their dogs and cats so they can go on wild cruises and, and enjoy life and stuff like that. While Scott enjoys their house, their food, their dogs, their cats, and has a ball doing it, huh? That's, a, that's exactly right, Lou. Uh, in my opinion, it, it's well worth it to take a little bit of time and think about what type of life do you want to live and understand that at different stages of our lives, we want different things. So my children, I was divorced. <clears throat> my children couldn't live with their mom because she got sick and they came to live with me. I was very happy about that, but that was a huge commitment. I committed to a stable environment for my children. We stayed in the same house for 10 odd years. Uh, they went to the same schools and they grew up to be amazing young men and now they're in their thirties. And so when the last one was getting ready to leave and I was about to become an empty nester and no one in my family was sick for real and there was nothing there was no responsibilities for the first time since I was two years old I had no responsibilities and what did I want to do did I just want to stay where I was or did I want to travel and my dream had always been to travel and just because that's your dream doesn't mean that when you experience the reality you're going to like it so in those couple of years before my son left home, I went on three trips to Central and South America. I did not know if I could run my business successfully on the road. I didn't know that I'd, if I just got on a beach, would I just sit there and everything would just collapse financially around me because I'm just enjoying the margaritas and, and being <laughs> irresponsible or, you know, or would the internet be good? I mean, there were lots of questions. And so it was not for me a good idea to just pack everything up and take off. So I went on three trips, six weeks, went to Colombia, Ecuador, Machu Picchu and Peru the first time, and then Central America the second time. And I don't remember the third, it was in the same area. And I loved it. So for me, it was, oh, I can see I'm going to be an empty nester. My son's saving money for a house and I'm going to help him get his house. And then I can leave. <laughs> and I did. And I went to Morocco and I went through North Africa and Europe for two years. And then some business brought me back and, and, I, and I just loved South America. So the last six to eight months I've been in Ecuador, Colombia, I'm in Panama right now, Costa Rica, and I just spent some time in Honduras. And I keep thinking, you know, it's been five years Lou, that I've been on the road and when, and of course I've been home like for Christmases and birthdays and different things too. It's not like I've never seen my family, but they're all healthy and they're all happy. And my kids are raising their families. They don't need a daughterly old grandpa, you know, telling them what to do, you know? And so I'm living this life. And one of the things that I realized really early on is if I was sitting in a hotel room, whether it's one star or five star, Hey, you know, 365 days of the year, that is not the way I wanted to travel. I wanted to really experience what, what is it like in the communities? Sometimes they're expat communities and sometimes they're the local communities. And I found through house sitting 
that this was a great way to get into the community because everybody in the community already knew the dogs and they already knew the owners. And when they see me with the dogs, it's like, oh, you must be Scott. And these are the, you know, and the dogs will all come up. And it's a bit of a shock in the beginning too, by the way, when I was walking down the beach and this guy walks up towards us and he goes, hi, sweetie. And I think, oh, well, that's just, you know, a nice little way of talking to a dog, you know, sweetie. It's actually the dog's name, which I knew, but I didn't connect it right away. And he's petting sweetie and telling sweetie how beautiful she is. And, and I realized like he knows the dogs, right? And then of course it was like he knew me and you get into the community. And I really feel like I'm living a lot of little lives in a lot of different places because I'm experiencing what is it like to live on the beaches in Panama? What is it like to live in the mountains of Colombia or in, uh, you know, on Rhode Island in Greece or up in the yoga retreat in, in Norway? And so one of the things that makes me really excited about the assist with is it gives everybody here that opportunity to sit down and say, like, what is my ideal life? Like, what do I really want to do? What are the things that jazz me up? What gets me excited? And then from where you are now to there is your journey. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, generally speaking. It didn't for me. I was like 20 years I wanted to travel. And one of my, I'm divorced. One of my ex-girlfriends about two years ago sent me a private message on Facebook. And she says, I'm so happy for you, Scott. You're living your dreams. And it's just so cool. And I, I was, but I thought, how does she know that's my dreams? So I messaged her back. You're correct. But like, how do you know I'm living my dreams? Like the way you said it. And she says, when we were dating, all you talked about was how much you wanted to travel and, and how you wanted to do everything that you were at, you described to me, everything you're doing right now. And of course, I don't remember those things, right? Because I'm just having a conversation with her. How often do we remember those conversations? So the, I just want to emphasize there is a process, okay? I couldn't do this if my children were 15 and going to school. So it's kind of like, you know, we have spring when we plant our seeds, we have the summer when we look after the garden, we have the fall when we have the harvest, and then we have the winter, which I look at as resting, right? So if you're in the winter of whatever your cycles are, and you wanna do something that's like the beach, you cannot, and I'm Canadian, you cannot go to the beach in the winter time in Canada. <laughs> you will freeze to death. So that's another thing that makes people really frustrated. Some people come up to me and say, oh, you know, I want to do this. It's a, I say, hold on. You are not in that stage of your life where you can do this. And that's just going to make you frustrated if you're not aware of it. So as you decide what it is that you want in your life, as you decide what you want to create, Lou has given you all the vehicles to create everything that you want in your life. There's no money problems. There's no any type of problem because he's there to support you and help you. And he's done it for so many people. There's no reason that he can't do it for you. So now it's a question of, okay, if I have my financials in order, what are my emotional goals that I want? What are my spiritual goals? What are my health goals? And, you know, there's no point in owning $25 million houses if you're having heart attacks every couple of weeks. So you have to look at your whole life. And what excites me about the Assist Wiz program that Lou and I have put together is it gives you the opportunity to step back and instead of trying to do everything and be like the lone wolf and get you know, frustrated and bang your head against the wall, you have people that are able to support you. Lou and I have spent easily 80 hours, 100 hours, Lou, putting together training for the assist whizzes so that they, they're not necessarily always, I mean, nobody's perfect, right? We all grow, we all learn. I don't want to paint this picture of, you know, get an assist whiz and you've got roses and, and sunny skies every day. That's not, you know, reality or, or even, you know, a possibility, but they grow with you. And we have a number of people who've been with us for years now who just, and every quarter we ask everybody, how is the assist whiz doing? And every quarter we get five out of five. And then these you know, nice little testimonials about what's going on and how, they, how happy they are. And they're, and they're all growing. And I can see it in, on the assist with side because most of them are Filip Filipinas or Filipinos. And 
they're becoming more confident and they're because they're doing this work for somebody that the person appreciates and, and gives them positive feedback on and they can see themselves like, oh, man, I can't believe it. I got a tenant in this house. Yay. You know, and the more they do it, the more they do it, the more they do it. And the more we share because we meet all the assist wizards meet once to twice a month. It just kind of depends. And we talk about what are our successes? What are you doing? And there's also this cross pollination. Like sometimes people will say, well, I'm doing this. And I go, oh, that's a really good idea. Maybe we should talk to some of the other members and say, look, do you want to try this idea? Because, you know, Lou did it with his and with his project, you know, his assist whiz, and this is what the results were. And so the whole thing is about growing a community. Like we've, we're building a community here now, and we have this support community that is a different type of community. And when I'm traveling, a lot of the countries I've been to are very poor countries. And a couple of times I was really like hit by a two by four in the head. I was, I'll, I'll tell you, I was in Mombasa, Kenya, and it was like noon, not a cloud in the sky. The sun is straight up. It is beating down hot. And I'm on this little hill overlooking the highway. It's a two lane highway. Like that is to say one lane going one way, one lane going the other way. And that's, that's a big highway in this town. And I see this guy and he's pulling a cart, a wooden cart full of wood at noon on the, in the tropics, you know? And I'm thinking that guy is working way harder than I ever will. Cause you'll never get me on a black, you know, highway at noon in Africa pulling wood. And, and, then, and then it hit me and I thought, you know what, we really need to do something to help these hardworking people uh, improve their lives. And so we created what I called 500 for 500, teach 500 people how to, to make some money, how to make $500 a month and have them teach someone else how to do the same thing. And we're, it's not like, I'm not at, what, what, yeah, there's never a success because if we hit 500, it's going to be 5,000. If we hit 5,000, it's going to be 50,000. But you have to start somewhere that people can buy into. And so our team has bought into it. They know that if they impress their clients and they, and they work hard, then we're going to have more clients. And maybe it's not their brother that gets the job, but it's someone else in, in the community or the country that's going to get the job and that changes their lives. And the little money that we spend you know, I mean, when you compare it to like, if you hired someone in the United States, the little money that we spend makes a huge difference in, in the communities. And the type of people that we have, a typhoon hit two years ago, and it just flooded out this village. And one of our staff was in the village, right? And so we, we said, well, like, what can we do to help? And they said, well, if you could send a few, couple hundred bucks, that would be great. So we sent a couple hundred bucks and then she sent us pictures of uh, pickup trucks full of bags of rice. She's feeding the community. It's amazing. So you have the opportunity to really grow your business with people that understand your business and make a difference in the world. And I think it's just a really powerful uh, combination. The uh, So... Having, I rambled on, I think, probably a little bit longer than I meant to, uh, but you know a little bit about me and you know a little bit about what we do. And I do have a presentation that I can quickly go through, if you like, Lou, on... Uh, yeah, I think just letting folks know what it is and what they can do for them, I think that's the, the key factor here. Awesome. So if I can share my screen, I'm not sure if I can or not. Do I have you... Uh, Identified. Scott, you I uh, made you co-host here yesterday. Okay, great. Thank you. So is somebody it says one persistent can share at a time. <laughs> I spend a lot of time being kind of like the host and the person in control. And then I always get frustrated, like, why can't they just hit the share button, share screen, and do it right? And now here I am in their shoes wondering how come I can't do it. Oh, there it is. There you go. Okay. Allow oh, now I have to allow it to do it. Okay. Sorry about this.
Okay, so what it says is Zoom will not be able to record the contents of your screen until it is quit, which means I think if I push this button, it's going to quit and reopen. So I think I'm about to do a little bit of magic and disappear, but I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> All right, so guys, uh, let us know in the chat, by the way, if you like the rental process. Did you like the rental process that I went through with you, the 90 day, 60 day, 30 day process before you renew your resident? If you liked it, let me know that in the chat box because I sure do like feedback from everyone. Uh, rental process, yeah, babe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's the bomb. Very helpful. Excellent. Thank you, Lauren. And clear. Yay. That is a goal. We try to make this fantastic. Good, good, good. All right. That's uh, good to know that you like that process. Love the checklists. Yes. Checklists are great. Good ideas. All right. Good feedback. Thank you. I'm in. Well, that's so. Uh, I'm good. back, you but I have to get. I that, have that's to get something to... that you can absolutely do. Scott's back, yeah, baby. I had him do a little, little uh, feedback for me during that uh, break. So we're welcome okay. back. Everything's Thank working you. now. Yeah, and I've uh, got to make him uh, co-host again. Right. And. Yes, you are co-host. Awesome. And there allow record to local files. Did you click that one? We can see a screen. Yeah, then it should be recording. This, by the way, is a really good example of overcoming obstacles. Not the fact that I had to leave and come back, but I am on a brand new MacBook Pro that I've been drooling about wanting to get for about six months. And uh, this is the second day that I've had it. So there are things that it just doesn't, you know, like you have to do system preferences and blah, 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 if it's the first time. And the last month has been an incredibly challenging period. And of course, you know, all I post are pictures of beaches and, and nice food. I don't really post the, the bad stuff. But Good Friday, my MacBook motherboard stopped. And then Saturday, I was bit by a black widow spider. And Sunday and Monday, Easter Monday, I was in bed. I got up once for breakfast and had a little bite to eat, and I was in pain. And then two days, this was in Panama, and then two days later, I went to do a house sit in uh, Honduras. Went to the doctor in Honduras, and they kept me in the clinic for a week uh, with IVs and everything else, because my back had this big red blob where the venom had gone into my back. And so then they ended up doing surgery. And presently, I have basically, if you take your finger and you just imagine that is a hole in your back that deep, that long, and that high, that's what I have right now, thanks to a black widow spider. So, uh, and, and I'm looking after a bunch of pets as I'm trying, as, as when I got out of the hospital, I'm, I'm looking after a bunch of pets because that was my responsibility. And uh, so, so what, what are you telling us, Scott, that your advice is for us not to get bit by a black widow spider? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Avoid that. Man, but, you know, it's we are it's, praying for you, man. I, I cannot even imagine what you've been through. You've sent me pictures and everything. Good grief. You have had a challenging time for sure. We're we're glad that you're back to health again. Yeah. And the thing is, is do you know the story about the farmer and the horse? You know, where the farmer's horse breaks his leg and the other farmer says, Oh, that's too bad. And well, you know, that's bad, you know whatever. And, and the farmer says, well, maybe. And then something else happens that made it was a good thing that the floor had his broken leg and on and on and on it goes. So it's kind of like, it looks bad, but then something happens and it looks good. So in my case, 
I told one of my friends, I got bit by this black little spider and here's the picture and look at this and all the rest of it. And she was like, oh, and I don't know why, Gina, Dr. Gina, you know her, Lou. And yeah. uh, so she started doing research on venom from black widow spider. I mean, I think she said, calls it research because she's a doctor and everything they do is research. I think she was just reading about it, right? In the encyclopedias and stuff. And then she went to rattlesnakes and she read about the rattlesnakes venom. And then a friend of hers comes to visit and his employees call him while she's with him and says, one of your guys just, one of our guys just got bit by a rattlesnake and we were putting him in the truck and we we're going to drive to the hospital, but it's an hour and a half drive. And she says, don't do that. In 40 minutes, he's going to be dead. So they found the anti-venom locally, gave it to him, and then he, they got him to the hospital and he's live. But if she hadn't, if I hadn't had the bite, she wouldn't have read about the venom she wouldn't have known what to do in this. And none of these people knew what to do. And there would have been someone dying that, uh, that is now alive. So it's just like, am I sad I got the bite? Not really, because someone's living because I got the bite, right? Wow. And, and so it's, right. it's kind of weird how life is and how it could be. And I, I think a lot of the challenges that we have in life are just opportunities to shine. And I'm you. sure I'm wrong sometimes too on that. Thank you for sharing that. Good stuff. Okay. So we're going to be talking about leverage and removing bottlenecks. And I really want you to think about this. Like what stops your business from growing? What are the things that prevent you from achieving the goals in your business that you want? And I believe one of the number one reasons is a single bottleneck. You can have lots of bottlenecks in your business, but generally speaking, I know in my business, there's one big bottleneck and that's me, right? I'm the biggest problem my staff has. They know it and I know it, right? Scott, we need to do this. So we can't do it until you tell us that. And I go, oh yeah, okay, uh, maybe tomorrow. No, you said that yesterday. And that's one of the things that if you get working with assist with is you really have to be aware of this and stop it. Okay. It could take the five minutes, figure out what you need to show them, teach them or whatever. So you don't become the bottleneck because you, this is all about multiplying your efforts, right? Like you can, you can spend five minutes and show someone the way you like something done or, or answer their questions or whatever. And then you're going to get hours and hours of work that you don't have to pay any attention to. Now, I'm not saying abdicate responsibility and not check on people and not look and see what they're doing and not give them feedback or any of that sort of stuff. But if you had to spend five hours doing that job, but you can spend five minutes and someone else can do that job, and maybe they get it 80% the first time of how good you'll do it and 90% the second time until eventually it's, you, it's, it's like a mini you working, right? Or a mini me. It's worth it because you're getting a lot more done than you would get done by yourself. Now, I think there are two types of essential tasks, those that only can do and those that others can do. And there are things that only you can do. You, only you can sign the papers, right? But there's a lot of other things that you don't have to do. But one of the things that happens, and this has happened with a number of people that I've talked to over the last couple of years, Scott, this is my problem and I have to do it all. And then I say, okay, well, tell me a little bit more about the problem. And what happens is it's a little problem here, a little problem here, a little problem. And I break this big problem into 25 little problems. And now there are two little problems that that person has to do and 23 little problems that someone else could do because they don't really, and they say, yeah, you're right, I don't really need to do that. And I don't really need to do that. Someone else could do this. And I don't like doing that. So why should I do it? And you're right, like there's these two little things that I have to do. They're not even really problems at this point. They're just tasks in the project. But we glom everything together. And then we go into overwhelm. And then we just say, oh, no, I'm not going to bother doing it. And that creates a bottleneck. And there is a major problem with tasks that are being done by someone other than yourself. And that's the process of training them. So oftentimes, like in the beginning, 
I'll be quite honest, Trixie is my COO. And she said, Scott, you know, I can get these people and they can help you, right? Because the reason we're doing this is because these people helped me. I was so impressed. I started telling Lou and other people and then they got really impressed. And that's how we grow our business. It's all word of mouth. We don't do Facebook ads or or TV ads or anything like that. We only want to work with really exceptional people. And, you know, Lou vouches for you. I know you're really an exceptional person and you value yourself and you value your staff. And there's going to be lots of respect and everything else because it's not uh, only about money. It's about relationships and growing and improving. And this process of training people in the beginning was a real problem because if you don't have time now, how are you going to train them? You know, that's just adding more problems, right? And that's one of the reasons why Lou and I spent so many hours putting together the training because what you're learning, they're learning. Well, they're learning the assist with part of what you're learning and they're able to then do a lot of that work and you do, we've tried to cut out the training. Having said that, you have to commit to spending time to make sure that they're at the level that you want them to be. And it's not because they don't know or anything else. It's because we're all individuals. We all like to do things our own way. We all have our quirks and everything else. And so you have to, it's kind of like if it was a marriage, you don't want to like go on one date and get married. And it's the same thing with the assist with. You just don't want to like meet them once, say, okay, go do it. And then never talk to them again or anything because it's, it's just not, it's not going to grow and work the way that you want it to. The training takes time. It takes practice. And then you've got to sit down and say, what do I really want to train them to do? And one of the things that's really great about going to lose trainings is you get a lot of ideas and you take a lot of notes. But I really want to encourage you when you go to go also with the goal of saying, OK, you know, what are what are some of these goals? How can we move these into how can we create like this plan? And then if I can create the plan in a way that you've got little bite-sized pieces, then I can spend, you know, 10 or 20 minutes with an assist with and get them doing this one little thing this week and then do the same thing next week and the same thing the next week. And when you go six months goes by fast and all of a sudden you've got them doing, you know, 30 or 40 tasks that you used to have to do. And every task you do, if it takes you five minutes to do, it doesn't. It takes an hour and a half. Because whatever you're doing, you go, oh, I got to do that thing. And that distracts you from whatever you're doing. And then that gets dropped. And then you go over to do something. But now you've got to do this. And then you've got to do that. And the next thing you know, an hour and a half, two hours have gone by. That's wasted time, right? Because you're not focused on just one thing. You've got all these things kind of going on. And anyway, so who evaluates the work? You do, but we do too. We have a management team in place that, that talks with them on a monthly basis, that checks on the work that they do, that evaluates the work that they do, that communicates with them so that if they've got things that they you know, are not sure of or whatever, they might not want to tell you. That's kind of a, they say it's a Filipino thing, but I think that's just about almost every culture doesn't want to admit they don't know what they're doing. And so, but they'll tell Trixie and they'll tell our, our management team. And then we'll either, and they'll tell me, and then I'll say, well, I know the answer, or I'll say, let me ask Lou, or I'll come to you and say, you know what, we've got this task, and we're not really sure what we're doing here. So, you know, let's talk about it and figure it out. And then things change, right? So Lou comes up with a brilliant new idea and a new strategy and a new plan. We put together training on that so that we can roll this out. And, you know, our goal is to be able to you know, Lou will tell you, like, this is what we should be doing now and everything else. And your assist whizzes are on top of it and they, they understand it all already. You know, so this is not about you doing the basic training. This is about you tempering the relationships so that it fits with your personality and their personality and everyone works to their, to their highest level. And so going back to who updates their trainings as things go, as things change. We know it should not be you, right? That shouldn't be something that you do because you don't have time to do everything that you need to do now. And after working with Lou and going through MPI, you should have a plan. And now the question now is how do I implement it? And most people say, well, I am implemented by getting up an hour earlier and staying up an hour later and cutting out my 
lunch and forgetting about coffee breaks because I'm the only person that can do it. Not anymore. You know, you need to think about how can I implement this? How can I break it into small pieces that is very simple for people to do, right? I mean, if there's something that just needs a stamp, you shouldn't be stamping it, right? If there's something that, you know, you need to do some research on something, you shouldn't be doing the research on it. I mean, if you love doing that, you know, do whatever you love doing, right? But generally speaking, there's a lot of things that I see the assist whiz is doing that they're happy doing, and I'm glad I'm not doing it. So the other thing I think is you're focused on the present moment, and that causes problems tomorrow and next week and next month, because I got to do this thing right now. But when you do this thing right now, you've dropped the ball on something that's going to be a crisis tomorrow or the following day or the following day. And one of the things that you, so how do you effectively identify tasks to delegate? How do you train your staff? Well, you know, we want the, we want the feedback and we're going to be asking you for the feedback and you don't effectively, you effectively identify the tasks that you want to delegate, but you don't do the training on it. Right. And we have meetings. Oftentimes Trixie will say, you know what, Scott, can you get together with myself and, one, you know, one of the team, one of the members here and uh, talk about stuff. And I'm very familiar with, with Lou's programs and what's going on. And because Lou and I talk all the time and I can help you with like one of my superpowers is saying, okay, you know, this is what you want to do and blah, 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 blah. And did you ever think about breaking it out this way, that way, and the other way? And then here we have a plan at the end of like the 45 minutes or an hour. And I'm quite happy to meet with people on an ongoing basis to talk to them about, you know, what's going on, how can we make it better? What can we do to, you know, help you achieve your goals? Cause this is all about you achieving your goals. And uh, I'm the sort of person that if I have a problem, I don't tell anybody until I solve the problem, which is a really bad way to be. And I'm probably the only person like that, but when you have a problem, you have a support staff, a support group, and, and I'm included in that if you're using our assist whizzes, to help you solve those problems. So if something's not going right, we get together, we talk about it, we figure out how to adjust and what to do. And uh, everybody that we, we've had these meetings with, which we do on a fairly, I don't want to say fairly regular basis, but at least once a year, um, comes away with, yeah, I think that's a really good plan. So I forget what that slide's about. The other problem people have is how long will it take one person to learn and become competent in all of your tasks? Because you've got all these things that you do, you're good at doing them, and it's going to take a little bit of time. But there is a solution. And if you, and that is our assist wizards, right? I guess this is where I get a little bit into the, this is what you need to do if you want to train team of professionals, uh, you know, that's what we've put together. And we've put together a management team to also work with those people so that you don't have to, right? I mean, your contact with your assist with should be, this is what needs to be done, right? And then our management team, like make sure that it's done and, and deals with any problems that come up in that process. So you shouldn't feel like you're alone in the wilderness. All these pictures, by the way, are pictures I've taken in different countries as I traveled the world. And uh, I thought it would be better than, you know, just sort of stock pictures. But that was a little goat in Morocco. I couldn't believe he was standing there letting me take his picture. And we want to build your business on a solid foundation that lasts as long as people needs homes to live in. And we want to create a legacy for your family and following generations. Um, one of the things my dad told me a long time ago was many hands make light work. In other words, create that system, create that team, and then you do the things that are important to you to do, that you love doing, and that are crucial that you do. And anything that isn't crucial, you don't need to do. It's one of and my favorite sayings. Many hands make light work. Isn't They've it a great one? that before. <laughs> yeah. And so the last couple of years have been a catastrophe in many, many ways. And 2022, which I thought was going to be like totally different, has continued in the wrong vein. 
but it has created a unique opportunity for you. Okay. And that is over in the Philippines when the COVID stuff all hit, the, the American companies and the Chinese companies and the German companies, the Japanese companies, they all did one thing. And that was let go of all their Filipino staff. So these were people that had been working 10 years, 15 years for these companies remotely. They were management people. They had uh, really excellent skills. They had experience, right? And so we were and continue to be very lucky you know, recipients of this awful catastrophe in the Philippines because, you know, all these people all of a sudden had no money, had no job, and they don't have like welfare there like they do in Canada and the United States. So they, they don't work, they don't eat. And um, we've been able to tap into that group. So when we, you know, when we talk to you and we figure out, you know, what your personality is, who, what type of people work well with you, because we don't want to put A type personalities with non A type personality. You know, we don't want to make it so that everybody's at loggerheads. You need, you know, there's, there's more to this than just doing the job, right? There's relationships. Uh, but we are able to tap into people that have done this for 10, 15 years and have managed people doing the, the work that, that uh, you want them to do. And so we're not looking at someone that's, you know, just finished university and doesn't know anything about, you know, really any, you know, like 21 and doesn't know anything about anything. We're getting really good experienced people. And that's one of the reasons that we're growing and uh, the way that we're, we're going. So that's, uh, you know, one of the reasons also that we want to try to help these people and get them jobs. So we've tapped into them. We've trained them on the street smart system and we've organized them so that you don't have to. And everybody needs a plan. I'm a big proponent of plan. So when you say, if you, you know, when, or if you said, yeah, yeah, I want to assist with, it's like, okay, well, the first thing we do is we sit down myself and you and Trixie and we figure out the plan and we figure out like what the types of, you know, the ideal type of person to work with you is and all that stuff. And that's Trixie's superpower. Trixie can sit down with somebody and find like more people have said to me, if I wasn't married, I'd marry my assist with, than, you know, and they don't mean it in terms of like getting like romantically married or anything, but it's just like that person is just wonderful. I'm just so happy that I'm working with them. And that's Trixie because she can, I don't know how she does it, but she can figure out your personality. And then she figures out the personality of the people that she interviews. And then, and then she puts that together and the people are really, really delighted. And we put together a real estate. No, oh, so a sec. Yeah. So here are some ideas of plans that, you know, we may end up talking to you about the real estate agent plan, right? How to bring top real estate agents on board so that they're giving you their dead referrals and you're turning them into uh, sales, you know, selling and buying lead generation. The online lead plan, you know, so finding leads in the most effective lead generation sites. And you know what all this stuff is. I mean, and I'm not telling you anything that's a secret or anything because this is all loose training, right? The comp plan, like, are you paying too much on your property taxes? And your comp executive assistant will check and help make sure you're paying the minimum possible. And we actually have a story about that. Where is it? Well, I guess we'll come to it in a minute. Some of the things that, that uh, we can, so here's the thing. We have a whole list of things that we do and we know we can do. And you might say, yeah, but I've got this. And maybe I have another business on the side or maybe I do things a little bit differently and I need someone that can do this particular thing that's not on your list. We'll find someone in the Philippines that can do that. Or we'll find somebody who's got the right personality and aptitude and everything. Because you don't want to take an accountant type and make them do outbound calls. It's going to kill them, right? Where the same thing, if someone is an outbound caller and they're really successful at it, you don't want to turn them into an accountant. So we want to find the right person. And then if there's training that's involved, then we'll make sure that they're training. But for now, just as a starting point, we have executive assistants that can look after your, your calendar, can look after all your appointments, can take your calls, can uh, one, of, one of our um, outside clients, he he gets one very important email every two days, but he doesn't know when. So he's every hour or so he's checking his email to see if this is if this important email came in. 
And when he checks the email, he doesn't see he doesn't see this important email, but he sees an email from Amazon. So then he spends three hours on Amazon, spends 500 bucks. And his sister, who's the co-boss with him in the business, and his wife are both mad at him for two weeks. So his executive assistant checks his emails. And now it's it's she does it in her sleep. But in the beginning, she didn't know which ones were important and which ones weren't. So there was that learning process and feedback. And now she'll text him, you, I think you have an important email. And that's the only time he, you know, at the end of the day, he goes in and he, he answers all the unimportant emails. But in during his working day, he only goes in when he knows he's got an important email that he has to answer. So there's a lot of things that they can do to, and they know it. Like they've been as a professional as executive assistants forever. And they'll tell you what they can do for you and how to arrange everything. It's just amazing to watch. We have lead managers, we have outbound callers, phone managers, business development managers, social media managers, property acquisition managers. Um, we've had people, yeah, I'll to back up for a second. We have people that have um, managed Airbnbs for, you know, something needs to be fixed, they look after it. You know, someone's coming in, they've got a problem, like a client, you know, a, a renter or whatever, they, they look after it and they manage everything for, the Airbnb owner. So there's, you know, we go into lots of different areas. So we figure out who you need to do what. And then your new staff is trained to do the work from day one. And your business is going to start flying because you have competent staff working the street smart system. And these are what some of our staff looks like. And they're, you know, we meet the, the assist whizzes meet together once a month the entire staff meets together once a month. And because we're here about creating this environment where these people want to stay, right? As, in, as the economy improves in the Philippines and worldwide and the Japanese and the Americans and the Chinese come and want to rehire these people, we don't want them to go. So we work very hard on creating an environment where they feel appreciated, where they feel valued, where they feel respected. And part of the things that drives me in this is the fact that one of my best friends is married to a Filipina. And so I've known them from, before, I knew him before, but them from when they first started dating to now they've been married and that's 20 years. And I remember how badly she was treated in the jobs that she had. You know, we'd go for a beer and he would spend the hour raging about how his girlfriend had been treated so poorly. And so this is something that happens in the Filipino community. I don't know why, it just seems happened there more than anywhere else. I know another Filipino who had a job in Dubai and she told her boss, I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm going to quit. Like, when's a good time? Like, let's work this out. And her boss had her thrown in jail in Dubai for two years. So, I mean, these are, you know, these sort of things I just think is lack of respect, lack of, of common decency and courtesy. And that's part of our mission is to show these people, this is how you, you get treated well. And, um, hopefully your friends see you're being treated well and they don't put up with this poor treatment that they've been putting up with for decades. Um, one of our assist whizzes does cold calls around the United States. She's, so one of the questions I get as well, you know, if you do cold calling, are you going to get people because it's, you know, an Asian accent or nobody can understand them and all that stuff. And, and so everyone that we have that has done cold calling has never had anyone act rude towards them, has never had anyone say, well, first of all, they speak very, very good, clear, concise English. So if we don't ever have anyone that gets on the phone that is going to talk to somebody that doesn't sound professional. And so they've never had any problems with rudeness, never had anyone hang up on them, never, I mean, Never, yeah, because they were, I mean, they've, yeah, they've never, I can't think of anyone that's ever been hung up on. I was thinking that a lot of cold callers get hung up on, but none of ours so far. And then I'd already mentioned the Airbnbs. Someone in our team has been looking after a prop whiz for one of, uh, one of the members. They had 42 properties and they found over $15,000 difference each between the value that the property tax form says and what the comps say. So there was over $600,000 in potential sale savings that they're working on, right? So, um, and that's something that, you know, 
Raise your hand if you want to figure out, you know, the value of your property versus what the government says so that you can save on income tax. And uh, no thanks. Those I've seen those forms. I don't I don't want to fill them out. But our staff loves filling them out. They love doing research. They love diving into all that stuff and, and figuring it out for you. And also they know that when it's the tax, property tax, we want the low end. And when we want to sell it, we look at the high end, right? So it, uh, it works both ways. So as I said before, if you decide they wanted to look into the Assist Wiz program more, we meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, usually on Zoom, Trixie and myself and Bev, because Bev takes the notes. So Trixie and I can just focus on you and don't have to worry about remembering what we said. And we design a plan for you and your business. And then we get together at least once a year to review the plan, to make sure that, uh, you know, to tell you about new things that are happening and, and make sure everything is growing the way that it should be. And then we put together custom packages for you based on what you want to do. Okay. So, I mean, we could say there's this for that amount of money and there's that for that amount of money, but the chances are you want a little bit of a bunch of different things that are important to you and what may be important to Lou might not be, uh, you know, important to Kevin. So we want to, we, we, it's totally customized. We're boutique, you know, we're not the Walmart of virtual assistants. Uh, and then we work with you to make sure that your assist was focuses on the most important tasks and projects to grow your business. So sometimes that's like, you know, what's important? Oh, getting all my emails out of my inbox. No, it's not important <laughs> compared to, you know, buying a house and selling a house and getting tenants in and, and that sort of thing. So uh, and while the number of hours your SysWiz can work is unlimited, we ask people to commit to a minimum of 10 hours a week and then grow. So it depends, but that again depends on your business. Some people are going to want to start at, with a, a larger number of hours per week, but we feel 10 hours is enough that the SysWiz can get in and do something and make a difference in your business. If they're working one hour a week for you, then it's really, um, you know, you're not going to see the results. And depending on your business, you may want them to work more, you know, and once they get up to 40 hours a business a week, uh, because your business is growing and you need all that help, then we look at adding more people on. And this is, this is really one of those things about, you know, if you could spend $5 to make $50, how many times would you spend $5? Well, the assist whizzes are the $5 and we just have to make sure that they're making that $50 for you and then everything's fine. And our goal is to grow the team as you grow your business and also to take over more and more of your business. To be quite frank, you know, our, my goal is to do 80, you know, 80% of your business is done by the assist business. Why? Because the 80, 20 rule says you're spending 80% on stuff that you shouldn't be spending any time on because it's not bringing you any money or any, any benefit. And the 20% should is what you've been spending on your business. And you should be changing that to 80 hours. And everyone wants to know prices. So depending on the tasks and projects, your assist with rate varies from about $10 to $15. So if it's a more of a high end, you know, if you want uh, TV quality video editing sort of thing, then that's going to be a little more expensive than, than, the, than the, uh, they generally are. So if this is something that's interesting to you, and, and I'll take questions right after this, um, we, if you go to assistwiz.vip, you'll see some testimonials from some of the people that have, have uh, used the assistwiz for six months to a year, I believe. And there's a contact us page or a form page that you can fill out. And I really encourage you to fill out the form because that tells us a lot about your business. So we don't when we get into the meeting, I don't have to ask you like, oh, you know, how long have you known Lou or how many houses did you buy last year? It's all there and everybody knows. And then we can get to the meet of the nut and have a really good meeting. So I'm done, Lou. Yeah, baby. Well, I tell you what, <clears throat> that is good stuff. Let's uh, stop the view there. Let's see if we can. All right. And Bruce, can you put that in the chat? so that everyone can take advantage of that. By the way, how many of you like this? Is this a good thing? Would you respond and let us know what your thoughts are? And thanks Scott for his great presentation there. He gave us a lot of insight. I think he gave us a lot of things to think about. 
Uh, certainly, I like his approach that, you know, triggers some thoughts in your brain about, uh, hey, what do you want your life to look like, baby? What do you want your life to look like? Now, that was a great starter up because I do that at many of my events, don't I? I'd say, let's get our head on straight first, and then yes. we can talk about the the tactics and the techniques and we can get to the nitty gritty, but let's make sure that we're clear about what we're up to and what we're trying to accomplish. So many of you are wanting to accomplish a lot with your businesses. And I certainly have equipped you at uh, Massive Passive Income. I've given you a ton of great info. Now the question is, how are you going to use that? What are you going to do with it? How are you going to get yourself taken care of? your files, your file folders, your processes, your procedures, your communications with your residents, getting them on board, the simplify them. That was the first thing we started with in our amazing process that we've gone in with these bonus sessions. And that's your manage whiz. Well, who's going to run your manage whiz and who's going to get those processes up and running and get your accounting set up and all that good stuff. You have something to say? <laughs> yes. I don't want to interrupt you. The Bert at Simplifyum is sending all of his customer support and all of his clients who, who, who say, well, I love this system, but I don't have time. And he says, go talk to Scott. And so we've got five or 10 people from Bert using the, you know, and we're doing the, all the work on the simplify them for them. So I should put that in my presentation because that we love it. Like the, the, the I ask the assist whizzes every once in a while, like, what do you think of the simplifying system? And they go, Oh, it's really cool. And all the things that they can do from it and everything else. So we, we love that system and, and we're right there to help you set it up or to run it. Or we've had a few people that have said, uh, I'm moving from one system to this one. And so we've helped them do the, the move over. Absolutely. And we've had other people that said, um, it's just a mess because like I was saying before about, you know, you've got this task and you do this task and then you let that task drop. Well, that task to drop was simplifying. I just made a mess of it and I don't know what to do. And so we just go and clean it up. So I just wanted to, to mention that. Well, Thank you, Jerry. You you make a really good point too. And that is that our people know the systems that we promote. Uh, so we do talk about prop whiz. We do talk about, and of course our latest uh, in improvements that we were just talking about on Friday night. And Scott, I need to bring you up to speed on that because we definitely are rolling out a whole new level with our websites. And it was a uh, amazing experience right now that's going on oh and good we need to bring our assist with in on this because it's all new uh, in terms of upgrading what we've been doing from a prop with standpoint if you can imagine upgrading that but wow. there there's some upgrades uh that we're very excited about from and we're integrating those into our web presence um and so we're just very excited about how we're going to be able to go next level on everything that we're doing and really taking people's businesses in an in a entirely improved direction. Um, cool. You, you know, there's another aspect of how we're approaching our uh, path to home ownership plan and improving that as another income stream for folks. So. so all of those different steps and systems and bonuses, guys, that we've been doing over the last... Uh, seven sessions are to integrate exactly this right here. And that's why I wanted to culminate with this very important step. And I've, if you've seen what I've done all the way through MPI, it's to take you from one spot and bring you all the way through to an entirely different place because you are in a position to improve your income dramatically. When you have the right tools, you have the right training, you have the right technology, and you have the right team, and your assist whiz becomes part of your team. So well, I've told you before that your technology, that's your first employee, that's 24-7, 365. They always show up for work most of the time. <laughs> the system is up and running. And so your phone system and your web system, foundational to every business. Now, what do we do next? It's either you or you that's going to do all the work that comes after that. 
Well, imagine that you've got somebody that now intercepts those calls, returns those calls, programs your time, sets up appointments for you, goes through processes and procedures. You need to go visit with a seller. Great. Who's going to go through and pull those comps and put together everything that you need for that presentation with that seller? Your assist whiz can do that. So I, I think Jerry said, I need to, you know, kind of incorporate the whole system before I even know what I need an assistant for. Well, the opposite is actually true, Jerry, because imagine that you don't have to do everything that your assist whiz can step in and actually move you to another level. That's what we've designed the whole system to do is to literally move you to another level. So all the other places are taken care of all the nitty gritty, all the stuff, all the repetitive things that drive entrepreneurs crazy, that entrepreneurs don't thrive on. They thrive on doing deals and making things happen and enjoying life. And whenever someone else can do those kind of things for the kind of money that we're talking about, my goodness, you need to move yourself on. Now think about dollars per hour, right? What what are you planning to make? Well, many of you have told me that you want to make at least a million dollars in this business. Well, what does that look like? What kind of dollars per hour do you need to be thinking about when you're earning that kind of money? Well, the answer is there's a whole lot of jobs that can be done by other people for a whole lot less money. So talk about return on investment. And another thing I taught you in MPI was return on energy. So this is oh, yeah. something that gives you a huge return on someone else's energy. They are actually working for you at a great price and you're helping people as well. So our whole concept of doing good while doing yeah. well, this is another way that you're doing good. You're helping others. And, you know, you, to be honest with you guys, one more piece is you don't have FICA, FUTA and all of that nonsense that you have with W-2 employees, people coming late, leaving early, not telling you what they're gonna do, doing other things on your time, doing Facebook and their nails and everything else, and they ought to be doing your business. But you and I both know that anytime that somebody's working for you full-time, they're only working for you part-time. You might be paying them for you full-time, but they're only working part-time. Well, guess what? With these folks, they actually, you see the timesheet every day. You see exactly what they did. They clock in, they clock out, and you get a report on a daily basis. Imagine that you could get that from a W-2 employee. Just imagine that. <laughs> in America, that don't happen. <laughs> but it does happen with the assist whiz. And another thing to keep in mind is they are overseen. So they're not just freewheeling independence. They're not they're working under Scott and Trixie's umbrella. And so they oversee these folks. They, they make sure that these folks are doing what they're supposed to do. And if they don't do what they're supposed to do, guess what? In the snap of a finger, they can literally replace them and put a new one in place. So I just encourage every one of you to really step back from your business and say, could I use some help? And what would that look like? And oh my gosh, there's some people out there that actually know what we're talking about and do what we actually do. And they're doing it for other people as well. So let's say that you, you want a 20 hour person. Well, guess what? The other 20 hours are devoted to somebody else doing exactly the same thing. Uh, so think about the folks that you're looking for and know that we're going to be right there causing things to happen. Whenever we have something new come out, whenever we have something that our folks need to be trained on, Scott and I get together and we actually film a whole process and procedure step by step so that they can just go right to that video library and be able to pick up that particularly identified item and go through the little few minutes that we have of training about that particular thing before they start acting. Yes, sir. I want to add one a little piece to that, uh, what you just described, which was absolutely right. The other thing that happens is they all go at the same time to watch that video. So Lou, this new thing that you've got with the websites, we'll do, we'll get that all put together. And then we'll go to the assist whizzes and we'll say, okay, 
watch it. They all watch it, you know, within two or three days of each other. Then we have a meeting and they all talk about it. So there it's, so one of them might say, well, I didn't understand this. And another one will pop in and say, well, blah, 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 blah. Oh, now I understand. So it's not just, you know, I may have the answer, but I wait to see if someone else has the answer because we want to grow leaders in the assist with world as well. And we also want them to learn. One of the problems that employees have is lack of initiative. I don't know how to do this, so I can't do it, right? And what we want to do is we want to foster an environment where they figure it out, right? And so when we put 10 people in, in a Zoom room together and they've watched something, we start talking about different parts of it. And then someone's, you know, and then it becomes obvious someone doesn't understand point A, then you go around the room who can help before I get in and give my answer, right? Because I want that person and that person and that person, because I know they always have like, I don't know how to do this. But instead of going, I don't know how to do this, and then not tell you it's not being done for three weeks, they're going to go to that person that helped them and say, Edwin, I don't know how to do this. Can you help me, right? And Edwin's going to be able to help them. So we're creating this, I don't know, environment where everyone's, you know, willing to help each other and learn so that, you know, they grow together. Uh, now, Kevin, can you uh, curate the chats and we can answer a few questions before we close? Conrad sure. had a question. Can we spread 10 hours over 10 task week, multiple tasks? So I don't think I understand the question. I think Let I understand just, the question, Conrad. You're saying, uh, do they have to focus on one thing for the 10 hours? And the answer, Conrad, is absolutely not. The 10 hours are your 10 hours, and they can be spent on anything and everything you want them spent on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and think about it. In your day, do you have one task? No. You've got a thousand tasks. That's and, and they're going to be the same. You know, so think of them as... The, well, you're multitaskers. The multitaskers. You're multitasker extraordinaires. <laughs> That's why we call them assist whizzes, right? So they're there to assist you in advancing your business. And yeah. you're the leader and they're the follower. They're the one that are, they're not going to come to you and say, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? They're going to take your leadership and the things that you want to focus on are the things that they're going to do. However, they're going to have a checklist. And here's what I want you guys to understand very clearly. They have a checklist and a hierarchy of things to do. So you get to check off and pick off that checklist. And you say, okay, I want this, this, and this. And then when they get that done, well, maybe they get that done in a couple of hours. Well, what do they do with the rest of their time? You might ask. The answer is they've got the rest of the checklist. So they're simply going to prioritize your job is to prioritize the things that you want done but after that they go right back to the checklist and use up their time doing those other tasks for you and i just want to add to that that the checklist priorities today might be different next month and that's a good thing right like oh i've got a lot of houses and they're empty now i got they're all full so those are two different situations and you're going to have two different sets of priorities and they're, they're willing and able and excited about shifting, you know, with you as, as your business shifts. So today, you know, if you say, well, we need tenants and they do this, this, and this to get tenants, you're not going to find out, you know, two weeks later, you've got a list of 50 tenants, but you have no homes, right? Like, obviously we need to change that to find some homes to get into the tenant. And it's, that's the balance that we're always trying to do, right? Yeah. And the guys understand these people are not real estate investors and they're not coaches. So they're not there to support or guide you through your business. They're there to do what needs to be done. And the only thing and the only reason that I really was just so excited that, that Scott and Trixie and I could put this thing together was to return time back to you. It's all about you. We want you to have more time to enjoy and do what you want to do. And one of the ways you do that is to have help. 
And I've certainly learned that in my business. And all of you who have been following me, you know that I've got great folks that really do help amazingly and they do their part to cause things to happen. But if it wasn't for them, <laughs> there's just no way I could do what I do. So just know yeah. that's the same as true for you and your business as well. If you don't get help, things will go lacking. Things will go backwards. So that's my final statement about that. Scott, anything to, to complete? I, yeah. I just wanted to say that after I got bit by the black widow spider, if I didn't have Trixie in my team, I, that I, there'd be no business, right? Like, I mean, I've been on my back for two of the last four weeks and I have a hole in my back that is taking up all of my energy. Like my body's trying, you know, it's got it. And so, I mean, I'm not high energy. My brain's not working very good. I've done some really dumb things in the last, you know, like, why did I do that? Well, you know, you're not thinking because your body is trying to heal itself. And so you want to make sure that when, when things happen that are not, maybe as nice as what we would like, that you don't have to worry that your whole business is going to collapse. And with the SysWiz team, they're going to continue working. If you, you know, if you're putting 40 hours or 80 hours a week in right now, and all of a sudden you only have 10 for whatever reason, um, and that happens to all of us at some time, whether it's health or whether it's family or whatever, uh, the business will keep on going because these people will keep on going. And as you, if you treat them right, which I know that you will, and it, you grow the relationship and you grow leaders, right? Like I really want you to, to encourage you to think in terms of, you know, the leadership type stuff, then they're going to show a little bit more initiative as they grow in their confidence. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know, they know and you, that and when you can't you got, do your business without them. <laughs> yeah. But, but they'll know and they'll say to you, you know what? we're out of houses, we filled them all. So I'm not going to look for tenants anymore for the next week, I'm going to look for houses. And that's, a, that's where we want to get to as opposed to you going, Oh, I just noticed that we don't have any houses to fill, you know, to get tenants for anymore, or buyers for anymore. So change, I don't want you to have to change them. But that's part of your job, nurturing and working with your assist with, right? Because they are smart enough, and they are they, they have good initiative. But it's a confidence thing, right? They need to have confidence in the job. And that's where And you... another thing, guys, is you're not alone in this either. You've got Scott, you've got Trixie, you've got me. We're, we're here to support you in this process because it's a transition process for you as well. Maybe yeah. you've been a person who does it all, right? And you're not used to having actually some help. And now you get help and you go, how do I do this? Well, that's exactly the re reason that Scott and I created that checklist so that every you, you can just look at the checklist and say, there you go. There's exactly what I need to focus on right now in my business. Check, check, check. Let's yeah. do that. When you get done with that, let me know. We'll go on to the next thing. Yeah. And you can, and like Trixie is in constant contact with just about everybody. And so, you know, so that's one thing. And then you can just reply to her email or her text and just say, you know what, I, I'm kind of struggling in this area and then she'll get me and her and you together and we'll, we'll work it out. So you really are not, and Lou, you know, if we have to escalate it to Lou, we will escalate it to Lou, but, but the chances are once we finish talking, you'll be really clear on what you need to do and what you want to do. And then it's just a matter of, of getting it done. Yeah. And yeah. you not doing the work. Evan, do we have any others we need to answer? There's no real questions there's several comments uh you know like karen fisher says i know i need this eric reisner very much needed uh so there is people that realize that it is needed but um there's no real questions per se they're just comments and so uh and do we have his contact in there that's the assist whiz dot vip did you say yes sir yeah. yeah it's in the chat all right so it's uh, so all you got to do is book an appointment with Scott. He's going to do a one-on-one -on -one with you. You're going to an analyze your business. It's absolutely free to have that conversation. And you can really determine whether this is right for you or not. If it's yeah. right now or right later at some point, you know, having that one-on-one -on -one conversation will give you some confidence about which direction to go in and when is the right time. 
And that's exactly, look, we don't push anything on you at Street Smart. You know that. We're here to help. We're here to support. We're here to guide. We expect to see you as a customer for many years to come. So we know that there's a right time for everyone. And we just want to be there when it is the right time for you. So certainly just booking that time with Scott and having a chance to really review where you're at in your business right now is a good idea. And you've got the opportunity to take advantage of it. Uh, I won't be talking about, I mean, I, I mentioned assist with here and there, but a presentation like this, uh, we don't have this all the time. So no, this is something right. that I carved out and put into place for MPI and for you people, especially because you've gone through a lot of training with the four full days and now these seven bonus sessions, you've, you've had a ton of stuff given to you and I just want to make sure that you use it. That's the key for me that, gosh, I appreciate your being there. I appreciate your making the commitment. But more than that, I would appreciate your having success and using this stuff because I know how good it is and I know what it took to get to this spot right here. So you using it and taking advantage of it is exactly what I want to have happen. And I don't want anything to drop. And that's the reason that I ended this series with this conversation about assist with. All right. Jerry wants to know where was the spider? <laughs> I was going to have a siesta. So I went into the bed that I'd slept in for the previous 30 days, laid down, and I'm pretty sure I fell asleep. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, black widow spider. I didn't know it was a black widow spider until three days later when I, I, uh, looked it up and saw, oh yeah, that's exactly what I had in my hand. So I guess I'm lucky it didn't bite my fingers. Mm. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> well, good that it had a land mass there like your back <laughs> rather than something that, that uh, might uh, uh, hurt a lot. There are worse places than your back. <laughs> There's worse fit. places. I will, go, I will go right there. There's worse places that that could happen. I, I don't want you cutting something this long and this <laughs> wide and this deep in certain places of my body. Thank you That's very much. Sure. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hopefully you had a great series here and you've learned a lot and just give uh, everybody come off mic and give sh sh Scott a shout out and thank him for uh, what he shared with you tonight. I know that it can uh, be of value to you. Great information from Kathy Jackson. Yeah, baby. Bye. Uh, Thank you. Uh, by tomorrow you afternoon. By tomorrow afternoon, I'll have a replay of this up at streetsmartwiz.com forward slash assist whiz. Uh, Dominique, that's it. she just, uh, I just missed her comment. I love my assist whiz. Thank you, Dominique. Ah, love it, love it. Yeah. Dominique has had her assist with for a while. Yes, yes. Yeah, so there may be some other people on here who have an assist with and might want to make a, a quick comment. I'm not sure. I didn't want to put anyone on the spot. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for being present and hopefully this has been of value to you and we are looking forward to seeing you again on Sunday night. So Sunday night is our Street Smart Success uh, session and definitely make sure that you are present for that. I've always got surprises for you at every Sunday night session and this session will be no different. So definitely make, make sure that you make the time to be there. That's nine o'clock p.m. Eastern time every Sunday night that we do not have a a live event, a meeting, and national training. So this Sunday night, we will see you there. Good luck, night. good good luck, good health, and may God bless. You can come off mic and say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, good night. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good night. Good night, Scott. Thank good you, Lou. Bye. Bye. How can we access the easy credit Bye. stuff? Easy credit, easyfixcredit.com. E, oh, yeah. Capital E, capital Z, fix, F I X, credit.com. And we can go there to sign up too for the. Um, yes, sir. If, okay. if you want to be an agent, 
Uh, do yeah. not sign up at just a easy fixed credit dot com. You put a forward slash agent after that, and okay. it will take you to the agent enrollment form. Okay, thank you. Thank easy you. fixed credit is just for the use of the services. Easy fix credit forward slash agent gives you services and the ability and opportunity to be an agent where you're earning money off of other efforts as well. So you choose which one you want to be, go there, sign up, and that's exactly where we can take it from there. Remember that as soon as you sign up, you'll get your own dashboard, you'll get your own website, you'll get your own marketing materials, you'll get access to the training. You'll get access to the training platform. Ton of great stuff there. So definitely, as soon as you sign up, start exploring that dashboard and seeing all the goodies that are there. I, I yes. definitely doing that. And then the uh, the past uh, videos, the the uh, out of the videos that were shown, how do I get access to those again? All right. Now we've got the opportunity uh, for you if Lou, you if have you the would. digital version of the system of the, of the four days we have added all of these sessions to that so all of these bonus sessions plus all of those four days are together for the 399 and that gives you all of the recordings you can access them at any time and as i was showing you earlier in the presentation all of that is done except for this session, which will be uploaded by tomorrow. So all of that's going to be available as of tomorrow. Okay. All right. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, baby. Awesome. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, good, I'll, get, uh, I'll get in touch with you, and we'll see when we can meet and talk about this web stuff. Excellent. In fact, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to send you a recording of the presentation that we did on oh. Friday night, and you'll be able to go through that. Oh, and then, okay, great. And, and share it out to whoever you need to share it out with, because it tells a lot, a lot of good stuff there. Awesome. Fantastic. And then we great. can create from there. Cool. Yeah. That way I know what you're talking about before we get together. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. Thanks, Lou. Appreciate you a lot. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate you tons. Get well. <laughs> if, you, if you'd have seen me three, four weeks ago, you'd have said, oh, this guy is, I don't know what's going to happen. I can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I, I can tell your health has come back. So that's a yeah. good thing. Yeah. Excellent. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, Bye yeah. everybody. Bye, right, everybody. Bye-bye. See you on Sunday. Bye, Kevin. All right. All the replays, Mark, are ready except for the one from tonight. So tonight's session will be up by tomorrow afternoon and everything is up and on your replay site. And I saw that you had purchased, Mark, the uh, re replays and the digital. So definitely you'll have that as well. Yeah, I will be getting the, uh, the address and the password to Dennis for everyone who has purchased the replays and so he can give those send those out to you starting tomorrow aha so that's going to go out tomorrow excellent all right thank you bruce you're welcome mark we're looking forward to seeing you soon hey i'm coming to st louis don't forget that mark i'm coming to st louis i'd love to see you in person <laughs> Good night, Dominique. I'll be there. VIP. Yes, 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 yes. That's great stuff. I'm loving it. Okay. <laughs>